60 years, SIAM was founded in 1952. So it has the I in it, and this is especially important because the I means industry, of course, which includes companies like movies, it includes companies like General Motors, Boeing, Google, Microsoft, IBM, it includes government labs like Los Alamos, the Morris Berkeley Lab, the Argonne National Lab, hospitals, foundations, you name it, non-academic users. And all of those people have interesting and important problems to solve where mathematics can help. And that's why this is so important. Now, the term real world problems is not precise. You know, one of the features of being a mathematician is you seek precision. And so people say a real world problem, and someone will say, well, finishing my homework is important to me. <laughs> it's in my world, it's real world. But of course, we don't really mean solving homework problems. And most real world problems are not like homework problems. They're very complicated. They're very nasty. People change their minds all the time. When I worked at Bell Labs, people from the businesses would come in and say, you, you have to do this, and we'd work really hard. And then they'd come in about a week later, and they'd say, actually, we don't really want that at all. <laughs> other things. So you learn, you know, to sort of tease the problem out. Um, and actually, in fact, we say solve problems that should be in quotes, because very few real world problems can be solved. What you can do is apply mathematical techniques and analysis to gain insights that help people to address those problems. So mathematics is not going to solve the problem of high-speed rails. It's not going to solve many other problems. But it will allow people who have to make decisions to understand the consequences of their actions in often non-obvious ways. That's one of the biggest joys of mathematics, is when you can solve a problem. And it turns out something very surprising happens. And then people uh, know that before it causes a disaster. So I think it's so important to have mathematical training. I don't know how many of you actually plan to go on and become mathematicians, how many of you are already mathematicians. But I think it's very important. People say everybody knows math. Having a scientifically literate, mathematically trained population is important. But there really are special insights that come from being a mathematician. So I just want to say a few words today. Now, this is meant to be slightly lighthearted. Uh, I thought I would talk about two stereotypes about mathematicians. As we all know, stereotypes are often true. <laughs> so the first stereotype is that mathematics is useless. My favorite math joke, you know, people say, what's your favorite math joke? I don't know. So here it is. If you've heard it before, I'm sorry. So there are two people in a balloon, a hot air balloon, and they're sailing around and they're lost in the fog. And they don't know where they are, and they're really getting worried because they took off and now they can't see anything. So they're sort of saying, what shall we do, what shall we do? And then the fog clears for a moment and they look down and there's a person standing on the ground. Let's say it's a sheep. And they say, where are we? And she says, in a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> the fog closes, they say a lot, and one of them says, I know that person was a mathematician. <laughs> she said is perfectly true and completely useless. <laughs> so actually we know that that's not true. It's not true that math is useless. When I was in high school, I used to think, I love math so much that people would say you could get paid for doing it. I think, why would they pay me to do it? You see it. I see it now, and you obviously see it, because math has brought you here, but it can do a lot more than that. And then the second stereotype and I do sort of apologize to people who aren't mathematicians. All the math people know about counterexamples, right? Where someone makes a statement and says such and such is true in all cases. And if you're a good mathematician, you immediately think, I, I wonder if that's what they're right. <laughs> And so sometimes you say, hey, here's a case where it isn't true, and that's a counterexample. And then that sort of blows it. I mean, the person has to shut up. You know, <laughs> you've given a counterexample. But non-mathematicians in that context tend to get very annoyed, and they say, it's, it's just one example. <laughs> but it, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. So I've tried to explain what a counterexample is to non-mathematicians. I hope all of you get it. <laughs> Looking for counterexamples is one of the great joys. <laughs> and especially in a real-world context, where someone might say, I have this really great way, this is when I was at Bell Labs, to organize such and such a thing. 
and you'd say, it won't work because of this. And I mean, that's it. You can't, you can't discuss it anymore. You can modify it, but you can't do what they said. Okay, so last year I made a few comments about George Polya, who's a famous mathematician who wrote a book called How to Solve It, which is still a print that I recommend. Here's his most famous quote, and I think it's relevant. If you can't solve a problem, find a problem you can solve, and then solve it. Okay, so I mean, I think that's what, I don't know what you all went through, but you might think, we can't, we can't do this problem, but we can find this other problem and we can solve that, and then you work your way towards the truth. His other quote that I like very much is this. A great discovery solves a great problem, but there's a grain of discovery in the solution of any problem. Like the one you solved. Your problem may be modest. I'm not sure whether you think it's modest. <laughs> <laughs> but if it challenges your curiosity and brings into play your inventive facilities, and if you solve it by your own means, you may experience the tension and enjoy the triumph and to me, that's the really great joy of mathematics. I know you can solve important real-world problems. That's great. But the joy of discovery is the real thing that counts. It's not making money. I won't even go on about how math brings you power. <laughs> <laughs> so on and so forth. I will just say that having that joy of discovery, to me, having done it for many years, is something that you just cannot express how wonderful it is. And that's what working on applied computational math does. It's challenging, it's sometimes modest, but there's always that joy. So I congratulate all of you. I think it's great. I hope you're starting to do these kinds of things. Think of counterexamples that are really <laughs> fun. And, you know, don't say in a balloon if someone asks. <laughs> and uh, congratulations. Amen. Thank you.